You are listening to the Hello Sport Podcast. What is up, punters and dribblers? Welcome back to the Hello Sport Podcast, home of unqualified opinion and unwavering bias. It's a Monday. Yep, it is. Really fucking invigorating start time. It is a Monday. Welcome to the punter and the dribbler. Pleasure to be here. I'm fresh. Yep. Feeling fucking tip top. Yep. Tip top's the one. Good on your mum. I'm not feeling tip top. I am feeling okay. I'm feeling better than I did when I woke up, which is always positive. Now, I don't know if that's the caffeine dancing. Oh, caffeine dancers. Mm. It'll dance on the palais. I've had three coffees before 10. You had one before you got in. Oh, you're pumped. You need one to get started. And well, the strong. And the fucking strong, Iceland black. Strong, How many are you in there? Three? Strong. Well, yes, yeah. Right. So five strong shots. Strong cap in the morning. Yep. Then a strong cap and a large ice on black when I got here. I don't like coffee. At least I love coffee. I'm How not many like shots a, is that? Is that seven shots? I don't know, dude. It's probably too much. That's far too much. Because no. I already have got a little bit of a pang of like wide fucking anxiety coursing through my veins. No wonder you sit that on the shit all That could be some beef as well, though, which I won't get into. But you are in text beef. <laughs> One that's been all encompassing. Oh, it's been a punch on. Um but no, I, uh, yeah, I'm feeling a little bit wired from the coffee. But sometimes, to be honest, dude, I'm, I'm a little under the weather. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like nothing bad, but. Well, that's, you probably, you, you're due a sickness. Well. You're about one a month. Well, so. I'm not, that's not true. That's not true. So, so your cycle. I. Your sickness cycle. Basically, we went, uh, look. Every 28 uh, days. For those, that's, that's not, that's not appropriate. Now, as you know, Eddie punters and dribblers i was i went away for our much uh vaunted holiday family holiday little getaway footy season starts this week very horny for rugby league dude rugby league's back i took thursday friday saturday sunday to go to mackerel beach with the family lovely place uh not an island like i think maybe i said at one point where you i did. was just told that not an island you said it was it's literally connected to fucking Karingai yeah. national park M- Mackerel Island, I believe you said. I didn't stop yet because I didn't know otherwise. Well, I didn't fucking know either, but I got there. Went, There's no way this is an island because... Can you drive there? No, you, you can't. can't. It's not accessible any other way by, than by boat. Right. You so that's dairy what's, farm. I think that's probably what's thrown you. Yeah, it's thrown me. Well, I just listened to Steph. That threw her. She threw me. Well, I think when you hear no cars there, you go, it must be an island. Yeah, you do. No cars, no shops, no, not much of nothing. Now, we got honey dicked a little bit thanks to Airbnb for... Just fucking lying to you. Well, it's not Airbnb. It's the people on it. It's the the not tenants not right word. Who is it? The host. The host. They just they just give you photos that make you think that you're like literally like the water's lapping on the fucking doorsteps. It wasn't. It was still nice. Like as in it's a nice place, but just not what I was expecting, nor Steph going in. Did you read the comments? Got to read comments. I didn't. I didn't book it. So we blame Steph for Got that. Got to read comments. She probably would have. I don't know. Anyway, look, they, comments they, tell they the story. misled us. As we're, the day we're leaving, Reviews. the day we're leaving, we wake up Thursday morning, Evie's sick, Zoe's sick, Steph not feeling great. In fact, we can go full blown and say sick. So the holiday was off to a fucking rager and the weather was fucked after the forecast said it was going to be good. Friday, right, we get there, all good. So did it rain on the weekend there, in here, Sydney? Uh, yeah, dude. It rained fucking every day. <laughs> there were still good sunny days at the beach, but it rained every day. Um, <laughs> so Steph was really sick. You know, the first night we got, so Thursday night, Steph was so fucked by the end of the day, she went to bed at like seven after the babies went to bed. I sat up by myself with a native seed gummy on board. Mm. <laughs> And I, and I listened to a podcast and like coloured in Evie's colouring in book. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to see it? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Good Lord, Tom. This is the dumbest. <laughs> oh, my God. This, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Thomas. It, Thomas. Was a, uh, it was a little like unicorn. It'll be in pony. the YouTube. It's in the YouTube. Yeah, oh, be. mate. Listen, interesting. Very interesting color selection. Well, no, the reason for the color selection, I will have to give myself some 
uh, like get out of jail clause here is that the reason that it was it's weird colors is because the pencil heaps of pencils are broken. Right, so, right. Interesting. Yeah. I will say black that. wings, black wings. Again, I was at the mercy of the fucking colours at my disposal. Uh, I'll just airdrop it to your toddler so you can uh, have a little look now. Um, it's it is it, listen. It's a pony. It's a it's a it's unicorn. A po- it's a is unicorn. it a unicorn? It's a unicorn pony. Is I mean, there a is there a horn? I didn't see the horn. I is it is it a pony with wings? Well, do unicorns is that have? a Pegasus? Horse with wings. Unicorns have the horn at the front. Tobler, did you get it? Yeah, it does look like a Pegasus. Uh, it's though. not a unicorn. It's, it's a, a Pegasus. It's a pony with wings. That's a Pegasus. Pegasus. Is that a Pegasus? Yeah. Yes, which are real. Um, Tom, that's wild stuff mm. from you. Yeah. So, but I you fucking let, so you let your hair down, dude. I loved it. I bet you did. It was actually really fucking. I felt like an absolute coloring in is idiot. cathartic, but it also you can get you can get like adult adult, coloring, adult yeah. versions. I'm a hundred percent going to do that. I'm not even joking. Like obviously, I felt like a bit weird because I'm coloring in like a fucking pony with wings. Well, a Pegasus, a Pegasus. Sorry, with a smile, with a smile. It's a smiling pony with wings. There's little love hearts everywhere and shit. I'm pretty sure I can't remember exactly, but I did do coloring in a couple of nights after as well. Was this just you? Showing Evie how it's done. Mm, look, I did. Was leave. this a bit of a flex? Did I leave the book open on the table so that she could walk past it in the morning? Yeah, and she was pretty fucking blown away because <laughs> she's shit at it at the moment. <laughs> I, it, I tell you what, it was good though. It was it? It actually just made me listen one hundred percent to the podcast. You know, when you listen to something and you're just farting around on your phone and you're distracted and you go, or even like an audio book, you go back and listen to like what you've missed. Oh, audio books and me don't get on that well. It's the same shit as a podcast, but. Anyway, so I sat there, I coloured in, I native seeded out, not an ad, but fucking did the did the trick. I'm 100 percent going to get an adult coloring book. I think you should, and some like Faber Castles or Derwents. Faber Castells. Castell is it Castle or Castell? I think it's Castle. It's Castell. I'm sure it's Faber Castell. If it's Faber Castle, I've been living a lie. No, it is Castell. C A S T E L L. Yeah. Okay, sweet. Faber Castle is pretty. Eh. I wouldn't have a clue. Well, it. Castell's like, ooh. It's got it's a, a fucking yeah. bit of a vibe. It's a bit more zhuzhy. Oh, zhuzhy. I don't know the best pencil out there. Um, Derwent? I was raised on a healthy di- diet of Faber Castell. Or is Derwent time. a pen? Look. The if River you, Derwent. If you are in Derwent River, if you are in the, the, the adult pencil game, I don't know if it's an adult pencil, is it? Just the good pencil game, colouring in and shit. Well, not the big thick fuckers, like the, the nice little ones. I'd also prefer, like, for you to tell me what colour goes where. Like, I don't really care for the, like, I don't need to know. I don't need to be like, oh, let my creative juices I run wild. I just you, prefer to be like, I'm, I just like the actual colouring in. Oh, you don't want to be creative? I'm not, clearly. When you look at those colours, that was me freeballing. Yeah, with listen, like, I can see where you were going, but it was, whole, it was jarring. It's fucking disgraceful, but... It was I tried to just go, here are all your colours, do your thing. Not the point. Steph's sick. I'm uh, So you're off to a rager. Rager. Both girls what are sick. What a start. Friday. What a start. We wake up to fucking pissing rain. All our shit outside, soaking wet, towels, shoes. Um, I get up and put my boardies on because I just want to get in the water. Have to. Huge fucking huntsman in my board shorts. Not wearing any undies. Nothing. What, he was in there? He was in there. While you had him on? Yeah, dude, he ran out. And oh, bro! Ran out and down my leg and across the fucking, and just into the nothingness. And I had to, I, I blew up our house with... Psh, psh. More time. Yeah, I was like, everyone's got to get out of here because I'm going to fuck this mother up, motherfucker up. Like, I was... And again, like, you don't want to... Were, act- were your boardies in the house or they outside? They were hanging on the back of the bathroom door. In the house? Yeah. Ooh. Dude, it was a rickety old shithole. Nothing was clean in there. All the plates, all the glasses, everything had to be clean before we used them again. Like, I, my hay fever blew up straight away because it was dusty. I could barely see. <laughs> I want to say this. The life when you've got children and shit, like, you're never going to get back to, to great holiday life. You're going to be distracted. You're going to get, like, pockets of enjoyable time. And you just have to go, like, that's what it is now. Make your peace with it. We had some really nice moments, right? We did. At the beach, playing, having a laugh, whatever it was. Yeah. Dancing, singing, blah, blah, blah. Cute. But 
Fucking hell, man. It's a lot. Huntsman in the boardies. Huntsman in the boardies. Fuck that. Next day, Evie's thumb gets infected. Guess who's got to fucking head back to the mainland to go and get fucking antibiotic cream or some shit for Evie's hand? This guy. <laughs> and it was the nicest day of the whole trip. I spent most of it on a fucking ferry. You know what happens when the ferry rocks up? Oh, it's engine's broken. Can't go in reverse. So... Now I've got to sit on this ferry for like half an hour while it's just getting across <laughs> Palmy, dude. It's like I can see Palmy. I could swim quicker. Is the, are you cursed with holidays? Is there a holiday curse? I was saying to I don't know if it was my mother. Because I don't my feel like I, I don't, don't want feel like you're drowning in fucking great holidays. No, we're not, dude. I don't want to say it's a curse because I don't want it to become a thing where you just again, it is what it is. You have good moments, you have shit moments. There's just a lot of fucking chaos, it seems. Yes. Anyway, Sunday rolls around. Guess who's starting to get sick? Daddy wakes up with a sore throat. Is it just the hay fever? Not anymore. Now I've got the fucking sore throats. Is that what it was? A, a case of the bad sore throats for the well, Birmingham's? Yeah, well, no. Evie and Zoe coughing their lungs out mm. up, up in the night. Mm. That's good as well, right? Up at four in the morning. Have you ever thought about getting a better immune system? Like, have you ever thought about, yeah. like, getting one? Well, no, because the problem than is... the one you've got. They got... They brought it home from daycare. No, I get all that. I'm it's, saying... I'm talking about you, like, and where I you're can't at. wait for this fucking dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever he has kids, he's going to be like, oh, fuck, sorry, man. You're going to be in all sorts. Absolutely fucked. But you got sick before kids. You're going to be... That's where no, it's No, 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 but you're going to be sick, and you're going to be, like, run off your feet. And I'm excited for that to happen. And I'm gonna sit here across from you with my kids, fucking. Why? I don't. I don't know why you want to fucking take it there. Well, all I'm, I'm saying, all I'm saying you're saying, asking for a better immune system, buddy. I'm saying, why don't you go looking for a better one? Like, why don't you fucking Can you go? Can buy them? Well, I don't know. Or is it about? I mean, I had some. Armor Mine's good. I don't need to look into it. Nah, you got sick, buddy. You got sick before, didn't you? You were sick a couple of I weeks ago. I got COVID. Ago. Huh? I got COVID. Now, didn't you get sick like a couple of weeks ago? My back. Ah, oh, you're back. You've got a week. You're just weak. As a person. Yeah, and I own, I own up to that. I admit it. Indigestion as well, which is fucking embarrassing. Gourd. Fucking gourd. Anyway. I don't come on a whinge about it every fucking four four weeks. Well, oh, it's, if it happens, good. it happens. So you sleep sitting up like oh, a fucking so freak. Oh, so like you've just had a breast implant or something. You're like sleep sitting up so the surgery. Yeah, once in my take. life. Anyway. Once in your life. <laughs> what a fucking So are you going to get a new one or not? Mate, we're looking into it. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be silly not to look into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'd be silly not to look into it. So um, where do you where do we arrive to? Great holiday. Yeah. Out of five stars. Which you know what, dude? The place is actually fucking awesome. Mackerel Beach. Yeah, it's really nice. No one on the beach, like chill. Quite. Like ch the water's not crazy. Where is it in relation to Patonga? Don't know, but if you go Which is to, also opposite Palm Beach. You just go to you know where Baron Joey House is in Palmy? That wharf? Yeah. Straight across. I thought that was Patonga. Uh, no. It's like, it's not straight across. Patonga, so no, but so Patonga is, is like, across. Patonga is like to the right and up a bit. Right. So you kind of go on further So directly down across is mackerel. Yeah, mackerel and like there's a few of them. So you get in this ferry and it sort of just hooks around. But dude, like. How long is the ferry? Well, straight across 10 minutes. But you go like dropping off at other beaches and shit. There's Mackerel Beach. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it's just there. Yeah, dude, literally. As opposed to Patonga, which is out and around. I'm I wonder whether people do like swimming across there. I'm sure they do, Tom. They're fucking... But I'm pretty sure... Don't sharks... Yeah, I wouldn't want to. I mean, dude, there were people swimming... I saw... Breed up at that island there, Lion Island. It wouldn't shock me. But like, did you see all those people that were swimming in Western Australia for that fucking... Is it the Rottnest Island thing? Like Cody Simpson... Of, oh, oh, oh. I think Fame. Cody didn't Cody Simpson do the was that the Rotnet was that that channel I, I thought he did the English channel no no they were just swimming on the weekend like him and fucking Mac Horton a couple of the bros oh that was in bros. Western Australia yeah like that's sharky as fuck dude yeah it's dumb fucking not that's dumb worth it. 19k's that's, that's a lot of time to be begging to get nibbled that's dumb really dumb don't know what you, what are you getting out of that? You know there's big fuckers over there that like to punch on. Yeah. Eat limbs. Yeah. Shit turns them on. Yeah. Seems madness to it me. It seems like absolutely. Listen, Cody, you should be smarter than that, mate. You should be smarter than that. You too, Mac. Pathetic. <laughs> 
I don't know about the pathetic, but it's, I mean, like, you don't want to see your Olympians get fucking Look, if knocked they, off. Yeah, listen, if they got knocked off doing that challenge, would you be shocked? You'd go, yeah, it's unlucky. But where are you swimming? Yeah, oh, Western Australia. Yeah, oh, okay, right. right. Oh, you mean where, where fucking sharks hang? Where people get killed every year? Yeah. Is that where, is that where, where, where you were? So anyway, holiday was great. Great Out of five Beach stars. Uh, the, the, the location? Yep. I give it f- fucking four and a half. Like, it's a beautiful spot. Again, no cars. So you, when you get off the wharf, there's just all these trolleys and wheelbarrows and shit. And you just dump your stuff in there and push it. Now, the thing was, we were sold house on the beach. It was maybe 500 meters up a little path. But it's very chill, very quiet. Uh, I completely forgot to get fishing gear, so I didn't catch a thing. But if the kids were a little older, or you're going with a family, mwah. Bit young. But also, like, if you have an immune system that's currently fucking, like, not... Or your kid's in daycare and shit, like, don't. Just don't. Stay at home. Stay at home? Yeah. Okay. There you go. Food for thought, punters and dribblers. Take that on board. Yep. Take that on board. Yep. A lovely weekend. Just another, just another kid-free weekend. Just free. A, another kid, yeah. Li- was it kid? Yeah, it was kid-free. Yeah, no kids. No kids didn't see a kid. Don't think. Might have seen some kids. Didn't take them in. Might have, might have walked past a kid, but didn't didn't have any kid interactions. Didn't observe any. Didn't observe any really. Wasn't sort of, you know, wasn't around them. Wasn't near them. And this is not anti-kids. Just saying. They just didn't. They didn't come into my path. Should we talk some sport? Yeah. We are brought to you by the one and only Neds, the best betting app in town. Rugby league is back, which means same that game same multis. Game multis. I was I was one word behind you there, but we I, I I think people understood what we were saying. We were out of sync, but. I, at least, am in sync with Neds. Same game multis is obviously just, I mean, it's just a fun way to bet on rugby. You know what it's like, Tom? You know what same game multi, a same game multi is to punting like French butter is to bread. Or to the baguette. Let's just say the baguette, because French butter baguette. But also- You know what I mean? Spaghetti to the meatball. To the meatball. To the spag bowl. To the spag bowl. Same game meat, same game (laughs) multis. Are the meatballs, baby. The ham and cheese to the toasty. Yes, Tom. Yes. With a beautiful uh, a cheese on there, just a glorious French cheese. A uh, lovely cheese. Now Some pickles, baby. Oh, you know well, pickle sauce. About? Pickle sauce. Shout out to pickle sauce. I wonder how many ham and cheese toasties you've had in your life. Uh, Fuck lots. Uh, hundreds. Not the point. No, it's not the point. The point is Ned's is the best in town. And betting with them is like eating the greatest ham and cheese toast you've ever had. That's what we're saying. If you enjoy ham and cheese toasties responsibly, of course, which we do, you don't want to be gluttonous and overindulge on ham and cheese toasties. One a day. Which is gambling. So gamble responsibly if you are going to have a punt during this rugby league season, during this rugby league week. But if you're doing it, do it with Neds. Now, if you need assistance with ham and cheese based issues, I don't have a number for you. But, if you do have any issues with gambling, Eddie, the number to call is... 1-800-858-858. Now, Eddie, we just watched Jake Paul, Tommy Fury. We did. Usually not the, the first sport we touch on, given that rugby league's back, motherfucker. But, but we, we, we did just, just come out of it. it. We've just We've come, just out, come out, out of it. I feel like it's easy to do. Now, the best part of the entire night is found on our Instagram, which is where the fucking the ring guy, the, the host... Radio Raheem mid fight cuts to, ju- to who to, to, is Radio Raheem? I don't know, but I've heard his name before. Tobler said he's uh, sorry. Dior said he's, that he's, he wasn't christened Radio, was he? No, no, no. no. He's, he's, he it's wasn't a, born Radio. It's from a movie. It's a character, right? Yeah, Radio Raheem is a character from Spike Lee's film Do the Right Thing. Right, but this dude is I don't know. He's just a boxing announcer. Right. How many followers on his IG and shit? Like, is he a big deal? Um, he has twenty seven point nine thousand. Okay, so he's not huge, but. He's just a news personality, sweet, whatever. He's not no one. Um, but they went to... Logan Paul. Well, they went to Logan Paul in the crowd and he's interviewing him. Apparently, and I missed this bit, but Logan starts bagging Tommy Fury. He goes, if you can hear this, you're a fucking pussy. He's like sitting on the stool in between rounds. That's not what was so funny though. Radio Raheem goes to Logan, what was the last thing you said to him? And he starts going through, like, the things he said, like, don't worry, come back a winner or on your shield, da 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 I love you. I love you, bro. I love you, bro. To which Radio Raheem 
who's forgotten where he is, <laughs> thinks that Logan is talking to him, and he's like, I love you too, man. <laughs> <laughs> Can we play it? Can you just get it up, Tobler? Oh or Dave, sorry, God. so we can fucking... Radio Raheem. It was... Listen, this moment encapsulates perfectly what I just watched. The whole event. The whole fucking build-up. All the bullshit. This is perfect. Don't put the sound on? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Turn this up. Last year, what was Radio the Raheem. thing that you said to Jake before you came out tonight? He said, Jake, I love you. I'm not going to give you a big speech. I know you got this, but I have to come back victorious and come back on your shield. I love you, bro. I love you too, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dude. Oh, it's good. That's so good. It's good for the soul. That's so good, dude. <laughs> I love that stuff. A lot of people making a point that it's very similar to my handshake fuck up with... It's uh, got shades. They're oh. in the same. They're in the same world. Yeah, they're in the same world. They're like cousins. Yeah. I don't think they're like, they're not, they're not, they wouldn't be siblings. No, shit, no. I think this is worse because of the global nature of the situation. Yeah. I would 100% agree to that. And I think that deep down Radio Raheem, who may have met Logan just tonight, is potentially of the opinion that they've got something going on, a bit of a bromance, no, mate. I just think he's fucked up. I think his default is when someone says they love you to you, it's sometimes you're like, I love you too. It's like when someone says hi and you think they're saying hi to you, they're not saying hi to you. Or when people go, hey, how are you going? And you're like, good, how are you? And they go, good, how are you? And you're like, wait. It, it, there's, there's absolutely a default in it, Tom, but there's part of me that wants to believe that Radio Raheem wants to believe that he just got an I love you from Logan Paul. Yes. Look which, at this you know, smile. He smiles when he says I love you. And yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, loving yeah. it, dude. <laughs> oh, that's so tough, bro. Look at this. It's like, it's you know inside his head after that's finished, he's going, oh, fuck. Fuck. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. no one picked up on that. Allah. See, look I... at the big smile. He's frothing. Yeah. He's that's absolutely tough. frothing. That is so tough. That's that's unfortunate. Um, but you and I, Eddie, we consulted our brand new trusty uh, Magic Eight Ball for the result, which was a draw. I would say this about the Magic Eight Ball. I think you need to get to know it. Yeah, that's. I agree. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you got to be able to ask the right questions. And the way that we were phrasing, framing some of ours, I think, were, were misleading us in the initial. Yeah. But I think, upon reflection, well, I think we worked it out a couple of minutes. Into I had um, asking. I had a friend of ours send through, like, he's obviously seen it, and he's like, apparently we were using it wrong. There you go. There you so, go. So, this might help with a few of the eight ball questions. Um, turn the goddamn eight ball upside down, ask the question, then turn it back over. Okay. Has a kid never <laughs> asked the eight ball a question before? Mm. Shout out to Crouchy. Well, Crouchy's... One of the greats. One of the greats, first and foremost. And secondly, Tom, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it does. We were just shaking it and then going, you got to turn it over. Look, it's been a while between using it, you know what I mean? I haven't used an eight ball in decades. Yeah. So forgive me if I was a little rusty... But we were getting real draw vibes. I used to use them to be like, if a chick liked me. Well, you know what I used to do for, for chicks? Uh, she, she loves me. She, she loves, loves me not. not. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've done that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I used to be like, will she go out with me? Yeah. Yep. Sweet. I love, she loves me, she loves me not. And that's uh, picking off the petals, petals of a flower. Hunters and dribblers. Yep. For those of you, see this fucking. Tried and tested. Well, the digital generation, maybe they do it, but like digital flowers or some shit like that. Whereas we were in very much the analog, uh, you know. We use what Mother Earth 12, provided. 13, 14 sort of dating range. Yeah, probably. Where we were using. Possibly later. Even later than Year that. Year seven. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. 12, 13, 14. Oh, true. Um, and even young, maybe. Year eight. Year five, six, seven, I reckon eight. you go 10 to, like, 10 years old to 14. It's maybe when you would defer to the flower or the magic eight ball. I'd probably, year, year six onwards. Yeah, but, like, year, as soon as you become 15, you're too old to be doing that, I think. When do you think you, you pick your last petal? You know? I'd like to know. Dude, it's a deep question. It's I'd a deep say, question. I'd say probably for me personally, it couldn't have gone beyond 13. But I reckon... Primary school is probably where I was doing my petal work. But I was a more a Magic 8 ball from probably year six onwards. I would say that I picked my last petal in year seven, but I wouldn't be shocked if it was year eight. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'll say. I about wouldn't my, be shocked. About my petal work. I wouldn't be shocked if your petal work went way, well into your high school years for you specifically. Yeah, well, we all listen. I was a bit of a loser. <laughs> There's a strong correlation between 
little losers and, and pedal work, I think. Into your teens. Into late your teens. teens. Yeah. Much like wet in the bed late. Um, yep. Where were we? Well, basically, we were just saying we used the eight ball to try and pick the result. It set a draw, nine dollar he does. Now, honestly, when we watched the end of that fight, it was like fucking Tommy's probably won it here. Like, as in he, Jake dropped him in the last round. But well, going like, into the last, we said that we needed a strong Jake round here. He drops him. We were begging for a 10 8. Might have got us there. Didn't. Although we just needed one judge to give it a draw. One judge gave Jake the win, which yeah. is pretty fucking surprising. Which I think they opened with. Yeah. I think they opened with Jake Paul winning the first fucking... Like, there's no way he won that fight. So the Absolutely judge not. to give it to him is kind of crazy. But Are you shocked by it, though? No, it's boxing. Well, actually, it's just fight sports generally. Um, funnily enough, when you know, we were talking about Volkanovski and... Um, Mahachev and how we watched the fight back and we still thought Volk won. I was no, Rogan. lost. Sorry, lost. Um, Rogan says he's watched the fight back three times. He still thinks he won it. I, but I We don't what, know what the fuck we're we talking about. That's why I find it interesting. But, I, but th- that's what I would like to sit down with someone of Joe's ilk and go, talk to me yeah. about what you're seeing. Yep. Because I'm, I'm seeing L's here. Yeah. I'm seeing constant L's. I so the Jake Paul Tom. It, it, listen, the fight was okay. They they threw some punches. I didn't mind. They it. grappled a fair bit, which was annoying. Or they clinched. Rather. I thought it was. I thought it was okay. I was a I fight. It was all right. I think it was okay. There were some good shots landed. What I would say about it more specifically is that Jake Paul can fucking wrangle quite a crowd. They like, weren't the most um, boisterous crowd. But I mean in terms of like the people that were in attendance. Oh, yeah. I'm, I guarantee you Devin Haney, after realising and seeing that pump up, Devin Haney, Mike Tyson, they're all getting paid to be there. Have to be. One. Deontay Wilder. 100%. Have to be paid. You would think so, yeah. Do you reckon Ronaldo was paid to be there? Or just Ronaldo's in up? Saudi Arabia living there playing soccer. He's probably just like, just fuck rock it. up. What else am I going to do? It was, the crowd was fucking dog shit. Like, well, like one they out of ten yeah, they in weren't. terms of horniness. Horniness, yes. They weren't horny. They weren't horny in the slightest. What I felt... The belt was a bit much as well. Well, the belt was ridiculous. But Tommy Fury crying his eyes out afterwards. Weeping. I I felt sorry for him. Like, that dude has actually been under so much pressure. Imagine your family saying that, like, if you don't win, don't come back to the gym. And that was like what his brother said or some shit. And then his dad was like, you're going to have to change your last name. If you lose. If you lose. Tyson said you'd want to fucking retire from boxing if you lose. Like, that's it. Pack it up. And you just see him cry and you're like, oh, I actually really understand how that would be a very mm. fucked thing to have to deal with your family, like, so blatantly putting that sort of pressure on you. Yeah. I I get that, but it was still pretty lame. Oh, yeah, no, it was it was unnecessary. It was, he was saying that was his world title. I'm like, well, okay. And he was, he was saying that, you know, that was his... What else was he saying about that being like the fucking zenith of his, zenith of his career? No, well, shit. again, he's Tyson Fury's brother, so he's like, I am. Oh Tommy no, no, Fury. that's right. He's like, yeah, I'm making my own mark. Legacy. That's what he said. My own legacy. I am Tommy. I'm Tommy Fury. Like, mate, you did just look. Sure, cool, sure, but like, w- let's be fair to income here, though. But I get it because of the pressure he's under. But obviously, yeah, come on. But like, but that, but you, but you can put yourself under whatever pressure you feels necessary. At the end of the day, all that his family were pointing out is that Jake Paul has very little boxing experience and isn't that good. And Tommy, who's been fucking training for most of his life, should get the job done. Like it should have just been a fucking fait accompli, you yeah. know? Go out there, beat the kid, fuck off. Jake's good though. Him crying and shit at the end was like, oh, oh, you're. This has consumed your life for two and a half. He's like literally fucking. Because well, he's not consumed. a great shit talker either. Jake Paul has the platform just to shit on him. It's clearly f- like nestled deep within him. Yep. Um. Anyway, that was that. The Did Magic Eight Ball was not being used correctly. No, it wasn't. And that's listen, on us. But Tom, you got to learn from your mistakes. It's about being better, coming yep. back stronger. They rematch. We'll watch it. Learn from your mistakes. And we'll be rematching that eight ball. Believe that. Now, in other fight sports news, Tom, did you see that Floyd Mayweather fought on the weekend? The dude from Jersey Shore? Yeah. Who did he, did he win? I'm assuming he won. <laughs> he won the exhibition. Yeah. Apparently, they fought at the O2 Arena, which is like 20,000 seats. Huge. Before, just, just before the fight, there was like no one there. Did anyone show up for the fight? There was people showed up, but like the, they had black tarps along the, the whole top of it just to sort of hide the reality of the situation. 
That's pretty, yeah. The guy he fought was a Jersey Shaw guy or Geordie Shaw, one of the fucking Shaws. Geordie mm, Shaw. I was thinking about that show the other day. In terms of the like the content you were fed as a younger person, like I don't know how old I was when Jersey Shore came out, Geordie Shore, Probably but even 16, just those reality shows, and 15, shit, maybe younger. They were pretty fucking hectic. Geordie Shore was. Jersey Shore was shit. Geordie Shore, yeah, they Jersey used Shore, to fucking yeah, but Jersey Shore, they, yeah, but they, you know, they did as well. They did as well. They used to fuck on camera. Essentially, you just like see them underneath dunas and get hammered and punch on and wreck shit. You're like, that is. This sounds like I'm getting too old, but that's fucking disgraceful content for people who are like, whose minds are being formed and their opinions are being formed to watch. Like that shit is ridiculous. It was hilarious. I'd still watch it again. Well, it's entertaining as fuck. I know. As if they give a fuck in there. They don't, but I'm just talking about the maturity of a young person to see that what they're seeing is not normal behavior. It's behavior of like completely fucking maladjusted psychopaths, essentially, with respect. Well, but like it depends what what frame of reference you use. It is normal in parts of society. Well, in some Going yeah, out and fucking and getting loose and there's fighting. There's nothing wrong with doing all of that. It's pretty normal. No, 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 that's normal. It was more about the way it was portrayed. Anyway, I just, it was a bit, it's a bit. You are, well, you're a dad now. Your sensibilities are changing. I understand where you're coming from. You know from. what I'm at saying. The, at the, I do. But at the end of the day, it is an, uh, an insight into how people live and it was fucking entertaining. It was great. I Don't agree with I Tom. Was. It's like the modern day like circus freak show. You can't have people there who like look weird anymore. So you just have like people who are fucked up and you watch them. Correct. Just yeah. to make yourself it's feel old. better about yourself. It's age yeah. old. Have yeah. fucking psycho roid headed dead shits go and act fucking absurdly and then get like they kind of get rewarded for that behavior. And then it sort of incentivizes other people like, oh, you want to be fucking famous and rich? Act like a cunt. Mm. Yeah, anyway. that's Geordie Shaw. Shout out to Geordie Shaw, Jersey Shaw, and to the Shout mayor of the Floyd fight. Mayweather, no one cares who about. <laughs> Like, what's going on? Surely we're, you're reaching the end of... Like, who's buying that shit now? I don't know, dude. I do not know who's buying that. Because an exhibition, you know... Like, I don't even understand how that works, right? Like, you're not... You're, you're paying to watch Floyd fight someone. But it's, it's scored unofficially. Like, people can score, but it's not scored there. There's no judges. Oh, really? So there's no... no. Well, but they, when they fought Logan Paul, that was an exhibition, wasn't it? Yeah, no judges. But they said who won. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. I swear they did. I don't think so. Well, whatever. I'm I think everyone sure just did. said that he won. Well, he clearly won, but I'm pretty sure they did. Anyway, fuck it. We've we've waited long enough. <laughs> Rugby league's back. It is. Now, to kick things off, because I think this last week, there hasn't been a shitload of rugby league to talk about. In terms of, like, everyone's excited, but there was no trials on, and it's now, like, everyone's just getting themselves really primed. Well, people are in the old language working themselves into a state. Working themselves, right? We're working ourselves. But in the absence of any rugby league player sort of scandal or things to, not even mm. scandal necessarily, but, you know, things to cover. Everyone's just getting ready and getting primed. Yeah. And when we get primed, we do so thanks to KO, don't we, Tom? We do thanks to KO. We get primed. KO gets us primed. KO gets us primed. Why do they get us primed? Because they've got every single game. That's why. Every single game. Every single game. No one now, else has every single game. Now, there's other providers out there, but they only get three games. Yeah. And there's eight a week. Eight. So do the math. And so there's five games you're not getting out the gate. Five. Now, and those games also don't have any ads. So the games, you can watch all the games play. without ads during play. Or you can maybe fucking waste your time watching ads and missing five games watching with someone else. Do whatever you want. But. It would be remiss of me not to going. mention that we were at the launch for rugby league last week. KO Fox League. We were at the launch time. Um, which was nice. It was, listen, it was nice to shake hands, rub shoulders, shoulders shoot the shit, chew the fat. Chew the fat. Um, with the heavyweights, the titans, the titans of industry. Of industry. Titans, yeah. of industry. Yeah. titans of industry. Um, I think that our attendance sort of... It, it basically implies that we too... Well, we classed the joint up a bit. At Titans. We did. Everyone was in blue suits. Yeah, we rocked up being like, oh, fuck, we don't have a blue sports coat. Uh, listen, I, blue sports coats are overused. I think so too. They're overused. There's other colours. I get that, you know, like, if you're wearing a black sports coat, you look like maybe you're going to a wedding or, like, you know, an opera. And then, you know, if you wear a pink one, it's a bit like, woo up. But you could go a grey... You could go grey. You could go cream. Cream. You could go like a dark green. Dark green, yeah. There are other like options. An olive. Yeah, an olive. 
John Ingo to wear pink, and that's his. That's his thing. But he'd also be wear, he'd be rocking that with a floral shirt underneath. Correct. Which is what he. That's his. That's, that's his. his I'm dressing up. Yeah. That's his class and up the joint. That's his Titans of Industry attire. Yes, John Ingo's Titans of Industry attire is a salmon pink uh, jacket and a floral shirt. Seen yep. him wear it many times. Many times. Shout out to John. It's kind of all I think of when I imagine. Yes. Him in my eye. So to Titans of Industry, uh, we were invited onto a boat down at Darling Harbour. What screams rugby league more than Darling Harbour? Nothing in terms of like a, a promotional event. No, there's only one thing that screams it more. And that's that's right. That's Brayton Astar and Michael Ennis on like those water. How, what, how you know you, those? How would I describe it? They've got the huge hose and it attaches to. It's like a water yeah, like rocket. a water jet pack. Water jet thing. pack yeah. sort of thing. But it's on your feet. Yeah. yeah. Not on your back. No feet jet pack. You know what we're talking about. And they were flying around the harbour in those things, doing their best. But before passing they, footies to each other. Before they came out, the professionals did it too, which they was were f- really classy. But they were good. They were good at it. That's what I mean. They were fucking good at it. They were doing backies and shit. They were good at it. They were very good. Now, But it was still very rugby league. It was Seeing amazing. people yeah. doing fucking flips, throwing Steedens. It was awesome, dude. It was everything I could have Holding KO flags. Yeah. It was great stuff. It was fucking awesome. But the one thing that we missed, and I just saw it in the paper and I'm disappointed... Well, we'd left too early. We left too early, dude. But we, listen, well, we had to go to a podcast, so it wasn't like we, we had to go to We a... left because we had to get a podcast. Also, they were taking Fox League's photo- photographs, and we weren't, weren't tapped on the shoulder. We weren't asked to go and join those photos, which is fine. It would make no sense <laughs> because we aren't Fox League talent. No, we're not Fox League talent, Tom. But was I waiting for a tap on the shoulder? Yeah, yeah. I was. Yeah. Now, yeah, I was. what's reported in the Sydney Morning Herald to have taken place after we left? Bit of a shirt front. Bit of a fucking journo stink. Brouhaha. A journo stink between Kenty of Kenty fame and someone who, with respect, I haven't heard of. I know he works at raw.com. Yes. And I've not recalled his name. But apparently he's like, calls Kenty out on Twitter or in the media, right? They've got media beef. Can uh, you get the article? Uh, just, just, yeah, Mike Mihol, Mike Wood, Mike Mihol Wood. Okay. Michael. Why I don't know why the middle name's important. Yeah. I don't know why it's mentioned. But well, maybe that's a double barrel last name. Not, not no, it's not hyphenated. Mike. Mike Wood. We'll go with Mike Wood. You don't have to have hyphenated for a last name, do you? You probably do. Well, then it's not a last name. There's, it's a second last name and a last name. Yeah. It's got to be hyphenated. Interesting. Maybe not. I've always thought it had to Whatever. Be. They obviously don't like each other. And... The reports are that Kenty like dragged him outside, but then some people are saying that's not what happened. I heard he dragged him off the boat. That's yeah. what I heard. Yeah, I want to believe that. I heard he had him in a headlock and dragged him off the boat, and maybe gave him a couple on the way out. That's what I heard. Couple of fucking short ones. Now, have you got an article there, Dave? I do. Yep. Now, uh, this what's this what's this article in? It's the, the Daily Mail. Daily, Daily Mail. Mail. Okay, so this will be closer to the truth. Yep, radio producer James Willis has applauded prominent rugby league commentator Paul Kent for shirt-fronting another journalist at an NRL season launch. Applauded. Um, he had a confrontation with the Raw journalist Mike Mehol Wood at the KO season launch. Is uh, Wood has launched a range of stinging attacks on Kent on social media, including a tweet accusing him of gutter journalism. Just remember that every time you watch, tweet and comment on whatever Paul Kent is saying this week, you're contributing directly to him and his type of gutter client list journalism there there's about 100 better sources of rugby league content that you can support he posted in august 22. is that him hon go up yeah, go up i want to see yeah. what he looks like okay bit of a younger guy sure uh they were in the same room at the nrl season launch this week for ko uh and the city morning herald reported that the two had a heated confrontation um Yep, he shirt fronted K- he shirt front Kent shirt fronted Wood at the KO season launch before dragging him outside. However, other witnesses who attended the event have said the incident was not physical. What? How's Willis c- c- celebrated it? Um. Sorry, what was that? Willis. Well, it says that like the articles like. Radio producer James Willis. Oh, I think he said good on Paul Kent for standing up to trolls. That was the way I saw it framed, as Paul Kent was standing up to internet trolls. Right, okay. Look, I don't know the specifics of how this has all gone down. I would think it would be a little bit fucking, like, 
you kind of got to cop it if you give it right. And it, it's my understanding that Paul Kent doesn't have Twitter and has said in the past that he doesn't care about what people say online, which is why he doesn't have Twitter. Maybe it was just Paul reminding the young buck who's, who's boss. Well, that's it as well. Or what about this? Now, whilst Braith and Mick dancing, like flying around on those jetpacks was fucking entertaining, Eddie, and it was, mm. this has done more for the launch of rugby league. Rugby league is back. Can I also rugby say... Rugby league is fucking back when PK's out there fucking bashing... Not bashing, shirt fronting... Allegedly. Allegedly, some young journalist. Can I present a, a, a theory to you, Tom? I noticed Paul Kent, PK, Kenty, go and acquire himself a bacon and egg roll mere moments before you did. Now, knowing what we know about the bacon egg roll off the back of you eating it, is that it was cold. Well, that was, my, that was my fault more than the... Was Paul in a bad mood? I don't know if Kenty's ever particularly happy. He's, he's had a fucking shocking bacon and egg roll. This Willis guy, Mark Wood, whatever the fuck his name, has reminded him that Jay- he thinks he's a cunt. Who? He goes, oh, the, come outside, cunt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come outside. Listen, I love it. I think it's good love for it. the game. It's great for the game. And in the sa- this is the same approach that we have with players punching on. Now, I'd say that journos are probably a little more critical of players, and so there is an irony to this, but I love it. Tom. I think it's good. It helped launch rugby league. Rugby league's back. Kenty's Kenty's fucking raring to go for another season. In terms of season launches, what more could you ask for than a season launch on a boat, Darling Harbour, Mick Ennis, Braith and Asta, Jetpack. Jetpacking, throwing seeds to each other. And then when all that's wrapped up, Kenty grabs a bloke round the neck and drags him off the boat allegedly. to throw down, allegedly. That's rugby league. Mm. That's rugby league. Yeah, it is, dude. It's the greatest game of all. That's how you know you're going to have a great season. This might be the greatest season ever. I guarantee you it will be because it's set up beautifully. Because it's funny. You don't usually see the journos becoming part of the story, right? They, they are the narrators of the greatest game of all, God's winter game. That is rugby league. But for them to now start to become like characters. Well, they've become characters over the last five yeah, years, yeah, I would say. Yeah. Off the back, really, of the work that the NRL 360's done to promote journos, they're part of the fabric now. Yeah. They're part of the furniture. And you're seeing that. And this is why, like, I, you know, and it's like, yeah, I mean, I know you're not a big WWF no, uh, no. connoisseur, but, like, when you see, like, you know, the, one of the commentators become a part of a storyline or the people interviewing backstage become part of the storyline or, like, you know, Vince McMahon's wife's fucking in there getting stunned by Stone Cold and you're like, what the hell? She owns the joint. It's just about storylines, dude. I'm, I wouldn't be shocked if there's some sort of... Someone in rugby league would acknowledge, like, yeah, we do keep an eye on the WWF and, and how they run their business and how they go about, you know cultivating fucking storylines like kenty and this guy punching on allegedly Ooh. is good for the game it's good for the game i argue it's great for the game i it's it's critical for the game mm. obviously it's been a couple of slow news weeks really i mean this rlpa stuff which we'll get to has been sort of dominating the headlines but that gets a bit boring and if you're in the writer's room you go we need something fresh we need, we need something, something fresh new. yeah this it was a, it's a mature storyline the the RLPA players union sort of shit like yeah. that's a mature storyline which well, is great for rugby league like they are trying to cater to their to the totality of their audience which is you know anyone from newborn to minutes to live but so you need to have a couple of things that are going to keep the older folk maybe engaged now they've gone okay we've done that we've sort of sustained people with a bit of background music through the cricket season that's done now we're back to sucking at cricket and bang kenty v journo again i'm sorry i forgot your name mark wood mark wood mike mike wood. mike wood again listen i'm not gonna i'm not gonna remember his name after this conversation so there's every chance i don't unless they punch on again someone would but a great start tom a fucking great start yep uh, and again, I know that, you know, no one would be shocked to know that we're now in the matchmaking game because we were talking about che- two cheese about his boxing career. And then before you know it, main events picked it up. Fox Sports picked it up. Cheese, Georgie's out there talking about cheese. Cheese going to fight. Cheese going to fight. I, I, would it shock you if No Limit got Kenty on a card? 
to punch on with this guy. Look, I don't like the guy's chances against Kenty. If I'm just doesn't Kenty, he's boxed in the past. He I calls, think he's done a box. He's done like a charity boxing event before. I think because he's he's the main, he does he calls boxing for main events. He yeah. knows what he's talking about. He obviously knows a sport. He's obviously a connoisseur, Tom. He's boxed before. I've heard he's boxed before. Who did he box in a charity event? But listen, all I'm saying, I, I would, I would, I would watch. I would watch. You, if you can sit here and look me in the eyes and tell me that you wouldn't watch Jerno's punching on, I'll get up and leave. You're a fucking liar. Because that's fucking bullshit. Yeah. We'd all watch it. Of course we would. And we'd pay top dollar. And we'd pay top dollar for a reason. I now, love it, dude. I read, Tom, yesterday, the RLPA hullabaloo done, over. They've reached a consensus. Apparently it's going to be announced in the next day or two. $1.3 billion deal, something like that. 37% increase on years gone by. Um, and there's like a hundred and something million set aside for super and for fucking looking after the bods. Of Love players. it. Good. If everyone's happy, I'm happy. I so hate what, when mum and dad So fly. what that means for us, Tom, is that we're almost certainly guaranteed rugby league Thursday night. For the live stream, Hello Sport YouTube. That means we're also almost certainly guaranteed... Manly to hump the dogs 3 p.m. Saturday afternoon at the home of Rugby League, Brookvale Oval. Brookvale Oval. So all the pieces, punters and dribblers, are falling into place. And what a time to be alive. Also, is it a coincidence that the shitter side in the Rugby League this season get a buyer to start the round? Drags? Oh, no. Not even the Dragons fans are upset they've got a buyer first round. I think they're probably just like... Prolonging the inevitable. They were, they were, they were setting, they were sitting, they, listen, I'm just calling it how I see it. I don't, I don't have a dog in this fight. I'm like, you know, I'm not, I'm not shitting on the St. George because I hate them more than any other side. I'm shitting them because they are the shitter side. That's what I'm, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. They are the most pathetic side in the rugby league this season. Do you know what Buzz Rothfield, fact. Uh, he came out and said they're a, they're a disgrace. Apparently you can get five bucks for them to win the spoon. They're a disgrace because of the, I think because they had like a biff. They're like, he's like, they're an absolute disgrace <laughs> because of the way they behave, the way they carry themselves. And he's going all the way back to Barbecue Gate. He's going back to COVID era. Was Barbecue Gate 2020? Or 2021? I think it was 2021. 2021. The years are... Uh, well, COVID fucked a lot of us. <laughs> well, it fucked everyone. It did. But you know what I mean. Um, but that, listen, are they a disgrace though? Well, yeah, probably, <laughs> probably. And I say that with all due respect to the dragons. Um, but yeah, they're a disgrace. How do you think Ben Hunt feels when he wakes up? I think he probably does a big exhale and then just gets up. Yep. Off you know, when you got to get up and go do something you couldn't be fucked to do. Yeah. Knowing you're the only person that can do it as well. Probably if you're Ben, like, oh, all right, let's go and carry a team. It'd be like if you were in the brick moving game, right? Been there. But you were you were supposed to move bricks with seventeen other blokes, but you're you're the only one lifting bricks. Have you seen? Did you ever see those brick? You could carry multiple bricks at a time on the job site. It blew my fucking mind. The brick carrying thing. Yeah. Have you ever seen the blokes over in like? The Middle East, I'm going to say, that throw bricks onto, like, top of their head. They carry fucking, like, 20 bricks. That's that's wild as well. well it's actually more wild, it's, to be honest. It's, it's way more wild it's considerably than a six-brick brick mover. But when I was shown that as a young-ish, well, yeah, as a young brick mover, labourer, as a young brickie, as a young brickie of note, I was like, this is the greatest fucking invention ever. Like, I was shocked by human ingenuity. I'm like, this is, you know what I mean? Like, we're standing on the shoulders of giants here. Like the great ape who learned how to fucking use a stick to get a fish or some shit. Like yeah. to get ants out of a hole. Like if there was an apocalypse. We're standing on the shoulders of great apes. That the brick the brick mover wouldn't survive. No. We wouldn't remember how to do that. No. But if there but if or, but You'd if, have to start at ground but zero. But let's again. say, you know, something cataclysmic happened and then the future civilizations are pouring through history. They come across a metal brick mover, they go, These people were fucking smarter than we give them credit for. Way smarter. These are, these are smart people. Get a photo of a brick mover up for the podcast in the video so people know what I'm talking about. I don't need to see one now because I've lived it, but like, <laughs> <laughs> put one in. 
so people know. But like six bricks at a time, dude. Yeah. You have them carrying those in your hands. You're like these are fucking heavy bricks, and they're sharp. Like they're cutting. Oh, they cut India. They cut in. Yeah, yeah. And, and listen, you, yeah, you're on a job site, so you don't want to ask for giant gloves. No, I don't want like some leather. You don't want leather up leather to the elbow. Guards no, you to d- carry well, bricks. Is, look but like it's a exactly bitch. what you need. Yeah, well, of course it is. It's exactly what you need. I tell you what, I'm not carrying twelve bricks on bare skin, but I can carry twelve bricks with brick movers. Easy, piece of piss. Yeah. Now who's a legend? You are king of the bricks. King of the bricks. So that's Ben Hunt. That's Ben Hunt. He's moving bricks twelve at a time, baby, yeah. and he's, he's not complaining it. about it. The rest of those fucking losers, respectfully, not, listen. Club not players, but well, club not players, not not moving a damn brick. No. Nah. Now, I predicted last season that the Cowboys would win the spoon, and they fucking finished in the top four. So what do I know? Not a whole lot, but I think I'm I think I'm pretty cherry ripe with this one. Yeah, I picked the Dragons to lose last year, and they didn't, but they were shit. So. What do you want from me? I was pretty right. Well, you were pretty right. They aren't better. You know what I mean? Are they no, they haven't got any year? better. Are they better? Buzz, they're already calling them a disgrace. We haven't kicked a fucking ball yet. They are a disgrace. They are. A, listen. Again, Mayo Man. Trust him. Mayo Man. King of the Mayo. I've, he's got my vote. <laughs> <laughs> vote one Mayo Man. Tom, I was buoyed to read that Coach Tony Siebes He's been getting some... CTS. Yeah, getting some old players through the club. Well, Brett Stewart's birthday today. Happy birthday to the snake, dear friend. Happy birthday to the snake. I, I believe I read Charles of Justice has come through to talk to the boys. Get fucked. They found him. Mm. Where'd Stephen they Matter. find him? Stephen Matter. Don't Where'd know. they find him? Didn't, the article didn't say where he'd been... I thought he was... Reclusing to. Is that the right word? I thought He's he been was a recluse. fully like, missing in action. That's what I read. Because there was a guy that went to prison that was talked to him this week. Apparently, it was an incredibly insightful Wait, hold on. rugby Craig, league player. Craig Field. Whoa, Craig. I was going to say Craig Field, but that was like, I didn't think Craig. Craig Craig came and talked to the boys. About prison? That had to be a man. Jesus Be Christ. a better man. Listen. Craig killed a guy. <laughs> so that's a better than a moving speech. I, I believe it was. It sounds well, because like Craig's a new man. Good, I hope so. Craig's a new man. I, can you go, allegedly? I think he killed a guy. I think he's still. He's, no, it, he yeah. spent eight years in jail for manslaughter. Mm. Can't make of that what you will. Well, not even a cow punch. He was a punch outside the pub, I believe. Whatever. Um, good to hear he's turned over a new leaf, though, because it seems like he has. He's done his time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but he gave a speech, did he? A heartwarming speech. Moving apparently. Uh, there's nothing quite like rugby league to have a killer in the fucking. <laughs> Let's get a killer in. Let's get a killer in to motivate the boys. Anyway, I don't <laughs> want to get too into it, but you know what I'm saying. Well, you know what I'm saying. Oh, I'm just glad to hear that Matt I was back. Shoulders. Shoulders of justice. Mm. You know what I mean? Do you killing on the field? That's exactly right. But in a rugby league sense. That's, yeah, of course. As in, like, just like. Just hit just people. Like, just yeah. Bang, yeah, hits. just like snap them and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I hope but that, I like that from Tony Steves. You know what I hope, and I feel like it would have happened, but I hope it happened. I'm sure it happened. Is he said, "Oi, Brad, <whistles> over here, cunt." Brad Parker. Yep. Yeah. Stubby. Canner. <whistles> over here, bro. Go with shoulders. He's going to show you to snap cunts. Yep. Just time an absolute snapping of a couple of cunts. Yep. When we see both of those boys come out this weekend and snap, jam in and snap, jam and snap. Jam and, and snap. snap. You'll know where it's come from. The great and the powerful Steve Matter. Shout yep. out to him. Shout out to Justice. Uh, miss you though, dude. We'd love to know where you're living. I know that's probably not something you want to tell people, but it'd just be nice to know. <laughs> well, you don't, to, you, you don't have to. You don't have to. You don't have to tell uh, everyone. No, but just let us know. Tell like, us. Drive past your front door. I don't leave you a gift. Leave a gift. That'd be nice. Have you still got that manly flag in the? It's in my car. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Shout out to... Uh, I've also got a manly calendar in my car that we will be putting up. Shout out to Ethan Ryan, who's, I guess you could say my stepbrother, although my mum is not remarried, but... Ethan Ryan, your stepbrother. Essentially. Well, you know, his Never old man, Ethan. my mum, long-term relation, but he gave us the flag signed by Brett Stewart, 2008. Centenary year. We won the comp. I don't know if you remember. <laughs> I remember. And his old man, Tim, obviously, who 
was the man who physically handed it to me. Did he? Yep. Nice from Tim. But we and should bring that fucking flag in. Well, it's in the car. It'll come in with the calendar. Yeah, good. Today. Not today. Where's your car? Oh, you didn't bring your car. Didn't in. drive. We've got things on this over. Yeah, no, that's all right. Um, is there some other rugby league shit here that I just want to quickly check? There was, um, is it Selwyn Cobbo calling Jerome? That's Roy it. Grub? Thank you, Dave. Now, this is funny to me. There's, this is very rugby league. So Selwyn obviously got in some hot curry. Throbo. Throbo. Got in some hot curry for saying that his coach, Kevy Walters, good bloke, weird bloke, shit coach. Paraphrasing, but essentially. Well, I believe it was in that order, yes. Yes. Good bloke, weird bloke, shit coach. That was on the one three back of the 135 podcast. I believe that's the name. Sorry. Anyway, that came to light. Months after he'd done the podcast. Yeah, like two or three months. What's funny is that in rugby league, everyone, ourselves included, listened to that bit and went, that's fucking brilliant. Bang. And that was everywhere. People didn't listen to the rest of the podcast. And only now people like Selwyn Cobbo, like if you go to go to Twitter, Dave, mm. or I'll get it up. Is it Peter Bedell of the Courier Mail? Peter Bedell. Where are you? No. Patel? Pete. There we go. Oh, no. Not Peter Fitzsimons. Pete Bedell. Courier Mail. Chief Journo. Um, so this is his tweet. You are a grub. Broncos winger Selwyn Cobbo unloads on origin rival Jerome Luay ahead of Brisbane Panther season opener. Like, that reads like he just fucking said it. Yeah, it He does. said it literally in October last year and we just didn't, no one cared to look. Don't you think that's funny? I mean, well, if no, you're sell and you're going, fucking hell, am I? When did I say that? Oh, that fucking podcast. But maybe he was just like, well, no one's reporting on it because no one bothered listening to the whole thing. I did, and I'm going to use it at the appropriate time, like before round one. Well, no, look, I'm not criticizing the man. Do Great it, time. do that what you will. It's timed perfectly. But I just found it funny that, like, that piece of news has been sitting there for however long. And we're only just hearing about it. Now, I don't know. What, what did Cobo say here? Because uh, oh, it was all around the origin thing, hey? Yeah. So, like, when Cobo was a game one or two in Queensland, he got knocked out in the first two minutes, mm. fucked off. Like, had to get off the field. Mm. Didn't come back. And when he was knocked out, Luai stood over him. Anyway, yes. Which Luai does, that sort of shit. I don't know why he did that, uh, referring to Luai, Cobo says. He's just a grub. It was pretty disappointing. I was in Brizzy, so all my family were there too. Two minutes in, I get knocked out. I was pretty upset in the sheds when the doctor said I couldn't go back on. Luai is a grub. But that's just straight out of the State of Origin handbook. I have no issue with anything that's gone on here. That's exactly Whether how you talk Cobo's about it. comments, the fact that we're only just hearing about it. Luai came back and said something as well, which I also like. Because Luai... You know, he doesn't mind saying shit. Lu Luai marches to the beat of his own drum, Tom, and I like that. So do I. I like that sort of energy in a world where you, no one seems to say fucking much of anything anymore. Like, he, he likes getting high on his own supply, don't get me wrong. The man... He, Tom, he smells his own fluffs. We've been over this many times. I like that Yeah, about same. Luai... It's endearing. He said back to him... He said a few things on that podcast, but I didn't know... He'd said anything about me. Again, of course he didn't because no. no one's listened to the fucking full podcast. It's pretty cool. And hopefully he was joking. But in a way, this is what the game is all about. It's about building rivalries and stuff like that. If he thinks that, let's get it on round one. Luai gets it. He does. Luai. He's a showman. Luai actually fucking gets it. Unlike most of these losers out there Respectful. not selling shit. You know what I'm trying to say? At least he's trying to pump the tyres of his round one fixture. Yes. Thumbs on seats, eyeballs on screens, a bit of fucking narrative and yarn, punters yep. and dribblers. Yep. That's what it's all about. Now, if you get called a grub, sweet. Play on. It's in a rugby league context. No harm, no foul. Mick Ennis was a grub his whole career. Doing a wonderful job. At Doing Fox a wonderful though. job. Wonderful job. Terrific. And he's a great man. And he's a great human being. Tom. Off the rugby league field. You need grubs in rugby league. Now, the question is, can Throbo go out there and back it up? I mean, I'd like Throbo's chances, but I mean, I don't think I'd necessarily like Brisbane's chances against Penrith. But who knows, man? Penrith, you know, are they done? Possibly. 
Possibly. Corus our big loss, Tom. Not to get two X's and O's, but huge loss. Yep. Kick out. Huge loss. Charlie but the Stone. Broncos, let's not forget this, punters and dribblers. Let's just let's just bathe in this reality. I think it's important as a community to bathe in this knowledge. That the Broncos lost five of the last six games and they were fourth. Top four with like what? Nine, ten rounds to go? Something like that. And they fell out of the eight. Let's just remember that. Let's bathe in that knowledge that the Broncos shit the bed mm. and that they're cursed. Mm. And I fully intend, well, I fully expect for the curse to continue. Yeah, I mean, Kempe has managed to curse them pretty significantly here. <coughs> obviously, Kempe trying to like distract everyone with this sort of uh, liver king glow up, where he's obviously definitely not taking steroids and losing heaps of weight and getting jacked again to try and distract from the fact that he's cursed the Broncos and refused to eat muesli bars. Maybe he's just trying to get jacked so he can break the curse and eat muesli bars. You know what I mean? Like, he wants to look jacked when he does it. Well, uh, Tom, that's exactly what he's doing. He is not prepared to face up to the fact that he's cursed the club and the only way to get out of it is by eating muesli bars. And he didn't want to eat muesli bars on camera because he wasn't in great nick. At least that's my vibe. Yeah. I think he was a bit self-conscious about taking his shirt off in front of hundreds of thousands of people. Didn't feel great about it. Mm. And so to negate that fact has taken up liver potentially King. a Liver King diet yeah. cycle and all. Yeah. Trennan Kemp, Liver King Kemp. In the pursuit of potentially getting in uh, camera Nick yeah. to get the shirt off, eat the moves, the bars. Break the curse. Break the curse. How long will sense. that take? We don't know, but I think that's where he's going. Well, I think that he said to himself, listen, do I need help? Do I need assistance from the Liver King diet? Sure. Yeah, I do. Allegedly. Allegedly. It's all alleged, but listen, I've eyeballed the guy. Yeah, we've seen him up close. And he, I haven't seen natural mass put on like that. In what, like three weeks, essentially? Well, two and a half. When did he get back from Europe? Fucking December? Just middle December. Yeah. So you do the math. Yeah. He was buck 50. He got back from Europe. Buck 50. So, yeah, I'm, I'm fully expecting the Broncos curse to continue. Um, and they just lost Flegler to the Dolphins, to the Fish next year. They did. Stop calling them the fins, dude. That's just so lame. Well, it's, it's the, the fish. fish. It's the fish. Um, but, yeah, Broncos in deep, deep poo-poo. Um, Herbie Farmworth is also going to the Dolphins from Brisbane. Herbie Farmworth going to the Dolphins or the fish, as we've just mentioned. Uh, Kevy losing cattle. I mean, it's hard to hold on to them all, though, I guess. You wouldn't be stoked about them going to your crosstown rival, though. Yeah, would but you? is Selwyn probably going to come into the centres at some point? You'd have to think this so. This is X's and O's. -y. It is. But it's things to think about, punters and dribblers. Things to think about. Um, before we wrap rugby league, just want to give a shout-out to a legit friend of the show, Angus Crichton, who's going through some shit. Um, yeah, just very sad. He was like... One, was he... What Mo was our first rugby league guest? Was Crichton our second... Or was he just, I tell you the what he was, we used to finish every podcast going, Angus Crichton, reach out. Angus Crichton, reach out. I think maybe he just joined the Roosters or maybe he was still, it's, no, he definitely gone to the no, Roosters. No, he gone he? to the Roosters, yeah. But he was just, a, he was obviously just such a cool dude. Um, and like the new kid on the block had a bit about him. We went to the same school. Uh, Hot we didn't young know him then. Stud Hot the young stud. But yeah, dude, it's just sad. Hope he's all right. Hope he's all right. Um, Hope he's back playing footy soon enough. Yeah, footy, sure, but just fucking happy and healthy and, you know. Happy and healthy. Happy and healthy. So, I think we leave it rugby league there, Eddie, we, and we move on. We do. Big but love to Angus. Big love to Angus. A reminder, punters and dribblers, just if I can shift slightly, still on rugby league, obviously, mm. a reminder to the punter and the dribbler live stream Thursday night. Be joined by Dan and Kemp. Of Liver King fame. Of Liver King fame. Of... Let's hopefully not get some roid rage on camera this Thursday fame. Yeah. Thursday night, Hello Sport YouTube, Thursday night rugby league. It's back, baby. It's back. Come join us. We're going to have a fucking great time. Yep. A terrific time. Hell of a time. Hell of a time. Hell of a time. Now, a bit of cricket, Edward. Yep. Tom, a bit of cricket. A bit of cricket. Firstly, again, you know, we're... There's some sad news, but like Paddy Cummins coming home when everyone's like, oh, family drama. His mum's fucking terminally ill and he's decided to stay in Australia with her, which makes complete sense. It's he's exactly in palliative care. Do. So give the man some fucking yes. room to breathe. And I think everyone will. And I think everyone sort of has, but that's just, that's fucked. You know what I mean? And like it brings everything into 
a clearer picture when you hear shit like that? Yes. Well, you know, there was some confusion, I think, initially as to why he was coming home. It's like, oh, well, look, you know, is sickness enough to warrant going home? And it's like, no, 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 no. Yeah, it is. It is. It 100% is. Correct. I don't know who the fuck was talking like that, but again, if they were, you would hope that it was before they realised the severity or the seriousness yeah, I of think, the situation. I think that's exactly It'd what it was. It'd have to be. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, mate, fuck. So we're a man down. Hell of a well, man we're down. men down. We're men down, but we're a one one of the. Uh, we're a hell of a man down. We're a hell pace. of a man down as we go to the third test, which isn't ideal. But there are silver linings everywhere, Tom. Silver and linings playbook as a nation. And Bradley a, Cooper, Jennifer Lawrence. As a one fan of the, of the movie, as I fell fan, in love with Jennifer Lawrence in that film. Not, as not fans the mm. of the movie, yep. Uh, David O. To, Russell, mm, director. Don't know. Shout out to Jennifer Lawrence, though. She was great. Well, she won an Oscar. And Bradley Cooper was great, too. He was great. Um, Makes me want to run with a garbage bag under my jumper. Same, dude. Makes me want to get out there and get after it again. We should run with garbage bags under our jumpers just to see what it does. Yeah, we should. Fuck, did we run a marathon last year? I think we did. Anyway. Were we training this time last year for a marathon, or did we pulled the trigger on marathon I don't think so. Okay. No, I don't. That's how late we left it. I think we had our first run in May. Well, that's how fucking late we left it. Still bloody did the thing. Still did the damn thing. Now, are we made of the right stuff? Sure. Cricket. Your words, not ours. Cricket. <laughs> Baggy Green is back and ready to be picked. When's the test? When's the next Wednesday. test? Wednesday. Oh, that's good stuff, dude. That's Wednesday. That's horny shit. Wednesday. Third test Wednesday, punters and dribblers. Baggy Green ready to be t- picked, Tom. He's got his hand up in the air. Yeah. My hope is that we live in post-fuck-up times. Right. As in, let's pick thoroughbreds. Best players. Let's pick, the, let's pick our best man. But do we lose a spinner to bring on a thoroughbred in a, in a, in a, you know, in a, in a part of the world where thoroughbreds may be less... You wouldn't need to lose a spinner. You could lose a Renshaw. Did we not lose Renshaw already? He just filled in for Dave. Oh, that's right. So, so you'd, you'd have, have to, to lose a hands. We had three spinners, didn't we? We did. And Hanscom's our best batter at the moment. Close Mitchell to. Stark also expected to be fit for the test. So, well, so Stark will replace Cummins, Cummins, and then Green would replace a spinner. What you could do or is you, fuck Renshaw off, put head to open, Green comes in, keep your spinners. But I don't know if that's a good idea or not. Well, hang on. You can, yeah, because... But that would be if Trav opened. Because if Renshaw opens... No, no, because Warner's gone home. Right. So Renshaw would open. But then you've still got the exact same fucking batting order. Who is... Who's Baggy Green coming in for? For... No, so Renshaw replaced Warner, and so... Renshaw was out, right? Renshaw was out, and Warner was opening. Trav was at five. Hey, uh, Kerry six. Spinner, 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 yeah, spinner, yeah. chicken dinner. You're right, you're right. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> so... You're right. That's my most hated saying, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Like, if people say, I fucking hate it. Is that about winning a chicken dinner? I just, it's just a really, it's like when people say, I love you to the moon and back. Like, do better. Do something better. Come up with more. I had a chicken dinner in Berrimah on the yeah, weekend. Dude, shout out to Berrimah. Berrimah Pub? Berrimah Hotel? Yeah, dude. Right near Barrow. Really good chicken dinner. It's me old stomping ground. A really good chicken dinner. So I'm not about to shit on chicken dinners. Tom. I love chicken dinners, dude. I hate the I hate the winner winner chicken dinner. That pissed me off. So cricket. Cricket. Now, now Baggy Green's back. Let's pick him. Let's pick young hot thoroughbreds. And if it means moving some fucking winner winner chicken dinner spinners out of the side, sure. So bad. Spinner spinner chicken dinner. Spinner spinner chicken dinner. Fuck one of them off. Probably that new guy who no one remembers his name. Kuhneman or Murphy. Kuhneman. Not totally. Totally's a hot young fan. Oh, fuck. I don't know who I like at the moment. Kuhneman seemed to be right. Well, everyone thought Kuhneman, well, a couple of people thought Kuhneman was a chucker. Yeah. We, we got some chucking videos sent about Kuhneman. We've eyeballed it, and he passes the pub test for me. He passes the chuck test. The chuck test, which is a pub test, which yep. is the same thing. So. Fuck him off, you reckon? I think so. Or we just move head to open up. And then fuck Renshaw off who yeah. was fucked off anyway, but came back in because Warner got injured. But do we think Renshaw is going to be an opener long-term rather than a five where the fuck he was coming in? Maybe. Head could open. Of course he bloody could. Because the kid can do anything. He actually was interviewed for the first time after what some are calling one of the great fuck-ups of all time. 
and was like, I was completely fucking blindsided by this. Like, it came out of absolutely nowhere. They had, he said he had robust conversations. Which again is... With the selectors and, a, the, and, a, and they probably went something like this. What the fuck are you cunts talking I'm about? the number four batsman in the world. On, the pla- on planet Earth. Yeah. And, and you're dropping me? Why? For Renshaw. Oh, well, you like, no, no, no. I, I'm a new man right now. I'm in a different headspace. I'm playing differently no, than no, I have. No, no, I'm not a, I'm not a guy you drop. That's like, I'm not in that position in the team anymore. I'm not a guy where it's like, oh, well, we might drop. It's like, no, I'm a, you pick me, yeah. motherfucker. Oh, but you didn't do well four years ago. It's like, no, no, no. Has, he's never played in India. I'm a different beast. I'm now. pretty sure he's never played in India. Yeah, I think that was, ma- that decision it was, was made off. continent Yes. Pakistan, Sri Lanka. But like, hold on. I'm number four in the world. Like I've changed. Things have changed. I'm a changed man. I'm a new man. So robust is a nice way. It's a very Andrew McDonald way of saying we punched on. Yeah. Verbally. He, w- he wasn't too political about it. He was pretty open and honest. He, he, he defaulted to the age-old line of it's just about, you know, I did my best to support the team, which is all you can do. You don't want to be a sook kicking fucking. You can't sooko mode. You don't want to go sooko mode because no one likes a sook. So he prevented himself going full sooko mode, but Jesus Christ, it would have been difficult, yeah. I think. Anyway, kids back, batted well in the second innings. Let's just woo up on the fucking sweeping. Let's woo up on dropping people and not picking people that are fucking half decent. Exactly. And let's try and rally around Skip and get a win for him and his mum. Yeah. That's, that's what I a, think. Let's get a win for Paddy C and the fam. Smudge, back to captaincy, happy. Great. It's good to have someone like that just waiting in the wings. Yeah, it's nice. Been there, done that. Well, he's been there, done it. He knows what to do. Yep. He's probably due another ton. Mate, he is. He's fucking, he's, he's ruining his Indian average. Mm. <laughs> Absolutely ruining it. It was 60 odd. Yeah. It was more than his actual average. So we'd love him to get a cutler. Yeah, we would. Brave knocks in before the tour ends. So Wednesday starts. That's brilliant. And then we've got, Thursday night, we're going to be watching rugby league and cricket. So if gods are good. Gods are great. We will have cricket Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. If gods are good. If gods are good. Yeah. And then we've, so we've got five days of test cricket potentially coming up. If gods are good. And four days of rugby league. If gods are good. If gods are good. Now, Um, if that doesn't get your toey, then you're a fucking loser. And the only way to watch all of that. Every single piece of that puzzle is on KO. So make smart decisions. Did you notice, Tom, and this isn't like some pro-English rhetoric. It's just I found it to be impressive. James Anderson, the number one test bowler in the world at 40-something. Yeah, that's crazy. That is fucking insane. Yeah, I've tried. Like, I do still hate him because he's English and it's difficult. But it's, it's difficult to not just fucking really really respect the guy you've got to respect that always hated you jimmy and i still do but oh. god damn it i respect you oh is that zoolander hansel god i hate you but damn it i respect you or is it a fucking talladega nights anchorman anchorman vince vaughn talking to burgundy at the end that's right i hate you ron burgundy i hate you god damn it i respect you <laughs> that's me and jimmy anderson um, probably Australians and Jimmy Anderson. So back to world number one. That's fucking ridiculous. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It's fucking insane. There's also some batter for England called Harry Brook who, I don't know. There's just, I just, I saw a headline about him. Again, I don't like to pay attention to the English generally speaking, but apparently he's a fucking weapon coming through. New kid on the block. Yeah, the but they like to new kid on the block their players and they never amount to a whole lot. <laughs> Except for Jimmy Anderson. Yeah, but you know what I mean? It's like, oh, we've got this great new talent coming through. No, I think he's like batting his dick off as as we speak. But then I also feel like, and again, you know, look, obviously this is a bit all over the the shop here, but are they playing England right now? uh, uh, New Zealand right now? Yeah. Did they enforce the follow-on? I feel like they enforced the follow-on with New Zealand and now New Zealand are like having one of the great comebacks of all time. Can you just look into that? Um, so the following's fraught with risk and danger. Uh, yes, they did. So England made the first innings total of 435, declared at eight wickets down. Um, Harry Brook made 186 off 176 balls. 100 and 
86 off 176. Now that's a fucking... It's a kid can play. Kid can and play. then, so with that total of 435, New Zealand made 209 in response. They sent New Zealand back in. Damn, and New that's... Zealand are now five for 348. <laughs> so they're leading England by about 120 runs with five wickets to go. Wow. Uh, I think... Day four starting today. I That's Hectic, test cricket. Dude. That's, That's test good cricket. stuff. That's test cricket. I love that New Zealand can play test cricket. So do I. It's good for the game. It's yeah. healthy. I'm now toey for the for the Ashes. Just to, just thinking about this new young kid coming through from yeah. England. Anderson, number one in the world, test bowler. I just I fucking love the Ashes series in England. Obviously, I don't love that the third se- session goes to like two in the morning, but. No, it's I not like ideal, but it's not bad. There. It's not bad. I love it I played over there. It's it's again, competitive. England, we we and just India. fucking hump those losers when they come here. It's yeah. so yeah. like yeah. Obviously, I enjoy winning four nil, five nil every year. Like that's it's fun. It's good to hump. listen. It's still good fun. Don't get it. Don't get it twisted. Like everyone loves a good humping, right? Mm. Yeah, exactly. Everyone Shoot loves off a, a couple. Of everyone loads. loves a hot hot romp. Mm. A night of passion. Yeah. We all love that. But you mean sometimes you patriotic want a, loads, Eddie. Yeah, but sometimes you want a bit of a tussle. Yeah, someone to push back. Yeah, you want someone to push back. You know, a bottom that's worth you know prepared to give you a little bit. Yeah, and that's what you get out of England when you play them in England. A bit of pushback. We're still going to bend over, obviously. But you get a bit. You get a bit back. Sometimes they starfish in Australia, and it's like, come on. That and, yeah, it's like, hello. Come on, hop on top for a second. Yeah, yeah, jump on. Because daddy's getting bored. Yeah, it's just, let's let's spice up the relationship a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what you do. The English do that a bit more. They change yeah. positions. They switch it up. Yeah, they do. In England. Yeah, they'll, in let, Australia, you, they'll let you hear things. They'll, they'll get dirty. Yeah. But a bit in, of Australia, dirty talking. in Australia, they're just sort of, they lay yeah. on their back, they look at you, yeah. it gets awkward. Yeah, it's, well, really awkward. But it's still fun. You still get a load off, but it's not as... <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's cricket? Yeah. Well, the women's team just won their third. Oh! Yeah. That should have started the whole fucking yeah. thing. I had that in my notes. Dude, they're like one of our great sides ever. They're, if you look at T20 champions... This is a six so World Cup. Six out of the last seven T20 World Cups. It was six out of seven. One. Like... Talk about humping. Dude, they are the best fucking side. They're they're like an all-time great side. Like, they are just so fucking dominant. They're so much better than everyone else. So much better than everyone else. Like, it's not even close. No. Who'd they beat in the final? India. Six of the last seven. Billion people in India. More than. More than. 1.5 bill they're looking at, I think, these days. Fuck off. Are they at one and a half? Yeah. Billy. Jesus Christ. That's a lot of people. I think they just overtook China. 1.4 billion. Fuck me, dead. And we got the Chockeys. Dude. Can, we, can you go through like the, the batting cut, the, the innings sort of yeah. scores and shit? I wouldn't mind seeing that. You think about the team, like when you go through, so there's like Beth Mooney, Healy, fucking um, Perry. Was she playing? Our girl yeah. Perry Elise was playing. Meg. Meg Lanning, Ash Gardner, who we met. She also, Ash Gardner's Beth like, Mooney, 74 or 53 C. We just always have, like, you know what I mean? Like, it reminds me of our great fucking former men's sides where it was like, we, you, someone would just stand up whenever you needed them. You know what I mean? Someone would just stand up and rip. And tear. And tear. Uh, so what'd they get all at 156? 156, yep. Yeah. I mean, Beth Mooney did most of the whack yeah, herself. Yeah, Beth Mooney's a weapon. Yeah. And then, what's SAW stand for? Uh, South African women. So it was South Africa. That's the final. Yeah, you yeah, said India. Final. You said India. Did I say it? My bad. We beat India in the semifinals. Even um, better. Uh, yeah. okay, and, so and look how many bowling options we have. One, two, is three. Is that a 2020 thing, six, though? Seven. Or is that just because they can. You've but got, they can all bowl. Eight. Jesus Christ. You don't see eight bowling. No, you don't. You don't. You'd actually be embarrassed if you were one of the three or whatever it is that can't. <laughs> and Elise Perry was one of the ones that didn't take a wicket, and we know she can bowl. Well, she's like the great. Where uh, is she our greatest female sportsman ever? Sports, female sportsman. Sorry, <laughs> female sportswoman. She'd have to be up. Well, there. she's dual code, so she'd be right up there. That's what I mean. She played for the Matildas. Bats and bowls. Bats and bowls. She's been playing for Australia and the Matildas when she was like sixteen. Hit one of those dope fucking bend it like Beckham shots in a international as well. 
Anyway, sick. Oi, sorry for dominating fucking female world cricket. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. It's that is fucking, cricket. That's cricket. Well done, girls. Well done. Beth Mooney, player of the match. Shock horror. Shout out to Beth. Is that us? That's us. Dribbles tomorrow. Dribbles tomorrow. We've picked the dribbles out. Scrubbed them. Put them in their own little segment. I think we're going to do a... We might do a bit more of this with the dribbles because obviously you find like we get to the end of the podcast and it was like, fuck, you know, you're just sort of punching through a couple of them. But there's so many that come through. We feel like we want to dedicate more time to it. But also what I think we're going to do maybe once a month is like we did last week with the social sport injuries is like a specific one. Like call in with your – it's all call in as well. The – Instagram. The written words not great. The written words are pain in the ass. I'll get the number up so you can. We also can't read terribly well, Tom and I. No, and no one wants to hear Dave read them all out with respect. Well, people don't like his voice. No. So now the hotline. That's no offence. No. It's just it is what it is. Yeah, right? look, I mean, it's an objective opinion. <laughs> uh, the hotline number zero two eight one two three two one zero zero. Say it again. Eight one two three. Two one zero zero, easy. And if you are international and don't want to call or then anything like that, then you just like have that, to send voicemails. Send a voicemail to dior at hellosport.com.au. There you go. Send a voicemail. Uh, and if you are looking for the number because you forget, it's in our Instagram bio hotline. Easy as fuck to find. But every month we're gonna probably do one where it's like we did the social sporting injuries, where it's gonna be a specific thing we want to hear about because that was funny. It was hilarious. Tell you what was one that I want to do. I was thinking about this last night. I can't remember how many. Oh, so Steph and I were talking about, I am like a notorious fucking don't get new undies when I need new undies. Holes in my undies and my balls we, are falling We all out are. We all shop. are. Right, that's dudes, right? That's men. Steph's always like fucking, you know. But anyway, so what I did recently was I went and I bought like 30 pairs of undies. I don't know if I spoke. 30? About, yeah, dude. I went so hard. I threw out everything. All my undies had What'd holes What'd you in buy? It. Just Kmart, dude. 30 pack. Bang. A 30 pack? Yeah. I didn't know they did 30s, bro. Or maybe I got three, like two ten, three tens or something, but I got like a shitload of undies, right? Yeah. More than I need, more than I can ever get through. It's brilliant, dude. Like when I- He's undie, drowning in undies. Dude, when I open my undie drawer, I'm just like, fuck, this is so good because- That's eyes up from you. Dude, I walk around the house in some of these old undies and you got a nut popping out or a dick hanging well, yeah, out somewhere. We've got kids now. Steph was like, Steph just said to me, she goes, you don't want them to see your balls. Like- and I was like, well, of course not. And she's like, they're, they're young now where they won't remember. But she was like, when you saw like your parents' dick or balls or tits or vagina or something, like it scarred, like it stuck with you. Like I can remember moments where I've seen my grandma naked, my grandpa naked, like accidentally. Steph recalled one where she walked into her grandpa full frontal nude. And she's, I can't remember the term she used, but basically in Serbian, he goes, no child, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like... That could be a funny one for people to call in of like the time you accidentally saw your fucking grandparent or parent nude or like... Or your parents on the job. On the job, you know what I mean? That's one. I apparently walked in on my parents on the job when I was like very young and they were going at it and I started going faster, 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 faster. Fuck off, you oh. did. Oh my God. I'm so fucking glad I don't remember that, dude. That Jesus, was, Tom. A guy in my uh, high, school, like high school said he walked in his dad beaten off. That'd be tough. Oh. That'd this, be tough. Listen, listen, it's out there now. This is one for next week. Send in your fucking, you're Send, on the job story. On the job, nude grandparent, nude that parent. Include, it's, no, it's nudity, it's on the job, it's masturbation, it's, it's all that stuff. When have you found your parents in a compromising or grandparents in a compromising situation and how that affected you? Yep. Hotline, just keep going. We'll, we'll, we'll let this thing go for a couple of weeks. So call in and leave them and Dave will set them aside and then we'll, we'll pound that one into the earth. Is that us? Ciao. Bye. Could you two just not talk anymore? <laughs>